Uh, again, Paige Tucker, I'm the CEO of the founder of Prostar. We are a world leader in the development of precision mapping solutions. And I'll explain what I mean by that. We're all familiar with Google Maps. Google Maps is accurate to about three meters, which based on close enough is good enough. It provides location services based on identifying the destination that you're trying to find. So if you're in another city, you're trying to find your way back to the airport, or you're trying to find a hotel, all you need is line of sight. You get close enough, you can see the signs, you've arrived at your destination, you can close the app off, and you're happy. We designed our own proprietary geospatial engine that provides centimeter accuracy on a standard mobile device, which we were told for years that would be impossible. Today, we deliver it to the impossible. And we have several clients that are providing validation that we actually can deliver centimeter accuracy on a standard mobile device. Our flagship product is called Pointman. It is a cloud and mobile application. We sell it based on a SaaS revenue model. I just want to go over some key highlights. So we're a pure play micro cap software as a service company. We have an extensive IP portfolio, which is somewhat unprecedented for an early stage startup technology company. We have marquee clients in multiple verticals, and we're starting to expand into more verticals, and I'll go over that during the presentation. We have a growing number of potential customers in the pipeline, including international now. We have a massively scalable business model, and the total addressable market represents a significant opportunity. We have an experienced management team that I'll discuss in detail. We're funded, and we have no debt. And we believe we are at a revenue inflection point. And again, as I go into the presentation, we'll be able to find confidence to you that we are actually at that point. So Point Man is patented, fully commercialized, and it provides the ability to capture, record, and display the precise location of infrastructure, both above and below ground, which includes utilities and pipelines. We have an existing list of marquee clients that span Fortune 500, government agencies, some of the largest engineering surveying companies in the United States, and we've recently expanded into additional verticals, which include municipalities, we've even signed the university, and oddly enough, even the zoo, which I'll go into detail. We have a veteran management team with extensive experience in the development of technology as well as in the capital markets. Infrastructure. My dad always said the harder he worked, the luckier he got. I had no idea that we were going to have a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill that was going to be passed when I started the company and developing the technology. Several hundreds of billions of dollars of the infrastructure bill is earmarked to repair and replace roads, bridges, highways, railway systems, but also our sewer systems, water systems, and to expand our broadband. To put things into perspective, there's 2.5 million miles of paved roads in the United States. And there's 35 million miles of paved utilities and pipelines. So if we think our roads, bridges, highways, and railway systems are dilapidated and in serious need of repair and replacement, it pales in comparison to what's underground. The reason I bring that up is because these two infrastructures, above ground and below ground, are directly connected. You cannot work on one or the other without impacting each other. And I would argue that of the several hundreds of billions of dollars that's earmarked, particularly to repair our roads, bridges, highways, and railway systems, they could potentially do more damage than good. The reason is, and it might surprise you, is that utility and pipeline companies have no idea where their utilities and pipelines are buried, not to any level of accuracy. In addition to that, this is what it would look like in any major city if I removed the pavement. I refer to it as a spaghetti bowl of utilities and pipelines that have been haphazardly thrown into the ground over the past 100 years. In fact, the majority of our utilities and pipelines were put into the ground between 50 to 100 years ago well before we had any compliance or oversight or regulation, and it was never intended to support this level of population growth that we have. 500,000 times a year, we hit a utility or pipeline during construction. That equates to hitting a utility or pipeline every minute of every working day. And when you hit a utility or pipeline, some bad things can happen. You can have serious flooding, you can have traffic delays for several hours, 
You can have dangerous petroleum products that are seeping into our water systems. Or if you get a high pressure gas line, there's high probability you're going to have an explosion. And when you do, either there's injury incurred by the worker, the public, or you could have loss of life. And I would actually argue that the loss of life scenario is happening far too frequently, and that number is only going up every single year. It's estimated that we spend $10 billion a year trying to identify where these utilities and pipelines are located. And yet, it's also estimated that we have over $30 billion of damages to our economy as a result of So obviously, whatever we're doing, it's not very effective. Part of the problem is, as I mentioned, 50 to 100 years ago, there was no regulation or oversight of compliance. In the last 50 years, including today, it might surprise you the way that we map where utilities and pipelines are buried is on paper maps. These are called fast-built drawings. These are the original planning and design drawings on how these utilities and pipelines are planned to go on the ground. And yet how we plan for them to go on the ground, and how they actually go into the ground, are two different case scenarios. For several good reasons. There could be barriers in the way. The ground conditions could be too harsh. Or where they have permission to place them could already be overpopulated with existing utilities and pipelines. So they'll just place them a few meters over or maybe on the other side of the road. And they're buried. They get paved over. And when the regulators come over, as long as it's close enough, then they'll sign off on these records that that's actually where they were placed. So that creates a problem. These are the system of record, and they're inaccurate by nature. Another problem is, is a business practice that's been well entrenched in the construction industry for over 30 years, and it's how we try to identify where utilities and pipelines are located. Every state has an 811 center, where by law you have to call into and inform the center where you're going to be doing construction that will require digging activity. As best they can, they take all the information that was provided to them by the utility and pipeline companies and try and determine who's going to be impacted by that construction. Then they notify the utility and pipeline companies that they have to come out and identify where the utilities and pipelines are located. They send out these contract workers that in most cases have little training or certification, and they use what's called an electromagnetic cable and pipe locating device, which the majority of the time will identify where a utility or a pipeline is located. But the problem is they use a spray paint can to mark on the ground where that utility is. Number one, at best, it's accurate to a meter. In addition to that, I don't know if they have mistaken a fiber optic line for a power line. Or these paint marks can last up to a year. And we know it's common business practice because they get paid to put paint marks on the ground to just go ahead and spray over the existing paint mark and move on to the next project. The construction companies, engineering surveying firms, and the excavating companies that take on all the liability, they don't trust these paint marks at all. What they'll do is they'll bring in these big hydroback trucks. What the hydroback truck is designed to do is to drill a hole in the ground over top of the paint mark and suck all the dirt out through that giant vacuum system in an attempt to determine if that paint mark was correct by exposing the utility or pipeline. If they don't see it, They'll move it over a couple feet and they'll drill another hole in the ground. And they'll continue to do this until they actually identify if that utility or pipeline is in that area. The reason is, is that the risk of hitting, for example, a large pipeline or a high pressure gas line or a fiber optic line, the risk is too significant. And they just won't take on that risk or liability. The problem with this business practice is it's very onerous, very time consuming, very costly, not to mention it damages the pavement. This is what it can look like when you drill one of those holes in the ground. You can see how congested and overpopulated it's getting with utilities and pipelines that are stacked up on top of each other and beside each other. And this is only getting worse every year. In fact, we're putting 300,000 miles of fiber optic into the ground every single year. In addition to that, this is the onerous workflow process on how they manage data in the construction industry. Again, a well-entrenched practice that has been involved in this industry for over 30 years. They locate where the utility or pipeline is and put a spray part down on the ground, or they bring in the hydroback truck. Then they send a survey crew out there to survey in the paint mark or the hole in the ground. Then they export the data onto a PC out into the field. Someone in the field has to review that data, export it back to the office where it's imported into their system of record, which is either a CAD or GIS system the majority of the time. Once the data is finally qualified, it's exported out to the field, and the field crews can use that information 
to make a more intelligent and informed business decision. That fastness takes two days. It can take up to two weeks. It can actually even take up to two months. Now, with all the technology we have that's being embraced by other industries to significantly improve their workflow processes, and in some cases, even create automation, you would think the construction industry would also embrace technology. But they're known as a lagger. They're actually ranked number 50 in the world, which means they're ripe for disruption. That's why we created PointMan. It's a simple mobile app that you can download onto any standard mobile device, including your smartphone or a tablet. And we significantly improve those workflow processes and even create automation. So the question is, how do we do it? It's pretty simple. We take the utility local device. We pair it to any standard mobile device using Bluetooth technology running our point map software. Then we pair it to a precision GPS receiver. So this is not the receiver that's embedded in your mobile device, which provides about three meter accuracy. This receiver will provide centimeter accuracy. Once the data is captured and collected onto the mobile device, it goes up to our cloud running on AWS. We run it through our proprietary algorithms and our post data processing. And we make that information readily available to anyone who needs it in the field or in the office in a matter of seconds. This is what it looks like. When they're located with the electromagnetic pipe and, look, and uh, utility <coughs> located device, instead of putting a pay mark on the ground, we're digitally capturing the precise location of that utility on the mobile device. And then we're gathering metadata that's provided both from the locate device and also from the precision GPS receiver. And that data provides the quality and the accuracy of the data being captured, which is demonstrated in that white box. For example, what type of locate device is it? The depth, the currency, the frequency, to tell us what type of utility it is. In this case, what receiver type, it's a Trimble R10. If you scroll down, we see vertical precision, 1.3 centimeters. How do we know that? Well, in this case, when the data was being collected, there was nine satellites in view. We can tell you which constellation those satellites are in. And we capture what's called the data stream data. This is the accuracy data provided from each satellite. As the data is being captured, run through our algorithms and our post data processing to determine, again, the precision and the quality of that data. In addition to that, we're also known as a data aggregation platform. What we mean by that is we can stream their existing data out onto the mobile device so the field operator can see where their existing records indicate the utility or pipeline is located in comparison to where it's actually being located. At a click of a button, you can measure the discrepancy of the distance, and all of this can be viewed in real time in the office. So if I had 20 field crews throughout the state, I can watch them all collect data, I can pull up their mobile app and see the data that's being collected. And at a click of a button, I can consume the data from the mobile device back into the system of record in the office so they can update their existing records with where these utilities and pipelines are actually being located. So for utility company, pipeline company, government agencies, municipalities, this provides significant value because they're asset-centric. They have to know where their assets are and the condition they're in. So our process is pretty simple. We capture the data, post to the cloud. It's readily available to whoever needs it in the field or in the office in a matter of seconds. Now, three years ago, when we completed the development of the solution, I said, let's go find an early adopter that's an influencer in the market, someone that could validate and provide the credibility we're looking for. One of the companies I took it to is known as Kiwi. They're the largest infrastructure construction company in North America. When I demonstrated what we had, they said, if you have what it appears you have, you could have a holy grail in the construction industry. They said, what do you want us to do? I said, I want you to sign a contract with us so we're contractually obligated to each other. I want you to pay us and pay us handsomely, and I want you to test it. And they said, okay, we will. We're going to put you on the I-70 expansion. It's a multi-billion dollar project. It's 11 miles of the I-70 interstate, which is the busiest interstate in the U.S., and it's the busiest section of the busiest interstate. It goes right through the heart of Denver. There's going to be sections of the interstate that we're relocating, and we're actually going to be relocating subdivisions. We're going to have to locate thousands of utilities and pipelines before construction can begin. I said, perfect. After one year of testing, it was so successful, they said, okay, now we're going to move into water and power and light rail. 
And after one year of testing in those divisions, they signed a multi-level service agreement with us. And this year, they're moving us into multiple projects in multiple divisions. So that provided the credibility and the validation I was looking for. But I also took it over to CDOT, the Colorado Department of Transportation, because they own I-70 and asked them if they would sign a contract, pay us handsomely, and test it. And they said yes. Last year, on January 14th, Colorado Department of Transportation mandated point man from the state law. So if you're a construction company, utility company, engineering surveying firm, anyone that either owns, operates, or works on utility or pipeline on the state right of way is required by law to use point man to identify the precise location and provide that information back to the state. Then last year, what we did is we said, okay, let's move into what might be the toughest vertical to get acceptance, and that is the engineering and surveying industry. Because in their world, everything has to be survey grade, which is one to six centimeters. So we brought on three trusted testers, KCI, one of the largest engineering survey firms in the United States that specializes in what's called subsurface utility engineering. WSV, Kramer, another large civil construction company similar to Kiewit and also TT Utility uh, Engineering Company, which is one of the largest engineering survey firms in Canada, but they also have uh, 20 offices throughout the United States. After six months of testing it and providing us really good feedback on enhancements and features that they would like to see added into the solution in order for them to adopt it into their daily business operations, we completed the testing. And all of them have now signed a contract with us and accepted it as part of their business operations. Our focus is the critical infrastructure uh, industry and all of the market verticals that again either own the asset, build the asset, or manage and maintain it. And this is an example of those market verticals. Then what happened last year, we started getting calls from other market verticals that we weren't even advertising to. For example, New Hampton, Iowa got a hold of us and they were Googling, looking for utility mapping, digital mapping, and they found ProStar. We asked them, well, what are you looking for? And they said, we want to move to digital, because we manage almost all of our assets on as bills, paper drawings that are a file for. If you want any information, we'll take a copy of it, hand it to you, or we'll fax it to you. And we want a digital mapping system. So we said, great. We demonstrated our map to them, and they said that they would like to adopt it and ask us how much we are. And I said, well, how many users do you have? And I said, we're going to start off with two. I said, we're under $5,000 a year. And our solution will manage all your above ground assets and your below ground assets. They said, how long will it take you to train us? I said, four hours, we'll have you up and train. Now, our competition is ESRI, ESRI, that's the 800 pound gorilla in the GIS space. It takes a four year college education just to know how to operate your system. So that's a $100,000 burden just for the resource you need to operate their solution. Again, we were under $5,000 a year. Very disruptive pricing. I got excited about it because I had the guys do some research. There's 38,000 municipalities in the United States with a population of under 20,000. Why do I pick that number? Because they're going to have limited resources and almost all of them are going to be operating off of paper as built drawings, managing their assets. And at some point, they're all going to move to a digital mapping system. The question is when and with who. Two weeks later, we got a call from the township of Aberdeen in New Jersey. The state of New Jersey has just mandated that every municipality has to report to the state where their water systems are and do so digitally. Well, most of them aren't going to be able to comply to that because they're going to be using paper maps. We just finished getting them up and running and did a case study. And then we actually have a letter that's being presented to the governor of New Jersey that there's a very low cost, easy to use, easy to learn solution out there. So hopefully we'll get a lot more adoption from other municipalities in New Jersey. We also got a call from Grinnell College, 150 year old college. If you think about a college, they're like a microcosm of a small city. They also have to manage all their assets. We got them up and running. We just completed a case study. We've been invited, been invited out to Iowa to talk to all the other universities and colleges in Iowa. And then, as I mentioned, we got a call from Tulsa Zoo. They were expanding into 37 acres in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they were hitting utilities and pipelines that they had no idea were there. And it was disrupting operations for the city of Tulsa. They said, you got to do something about this. So we got them up and running. We're also doing a case study on them because they said every zoo and aquarium in North America could use a solution like this. 
So again, what this is demonstrating is just how broad our market is, and that we're also getting to that point where we're expanding into multiple markets. And instead of having to push our product to the market, it seems that it's being pulled into the market. We recently just signed a landmark, a very small surveying company that was brought in to map the city of Boulder because the fiber optic company was drilling through their water systems, their sewer systems, their power systems, and they said, no more fiber optic going into the ground until you can prove that you know where all the utilities and pipelines are buried. They brought this small company in that was using this technology called Point Man and map all the Boulder. They just picked up Golden, another city in Colorado to map out. And from my understanding, we're now working with one of the largest gas distribution companies in the United States to map out the entire gas distribution network for this very large company in five states. We also signed Cocosing a couple months ago, which is one of the largest heavy highway construction companies. And then in my pipeline right now, I have uh, the 10th um, top private um, privately held firm in the U.S. that I'm pretty confident that we are going to sign. We just got commitment yesterday that we're signing one of the largest data collection and surveying companies in Australia. They also have operations in the UK and Papua New Guinea, so I'm happy that we're moving into international markets. And we're also working with one of the largest copper mine companies um, in the world. They were actually doing their mining and hitting the gas line. It was right beside the electrical line. They're lucky that electrical line was not power or they would have had a big explosion. It just happened to be somebody on the project that had the point man app and said, hey, you should be using this. As a result, they called this up, and I'm pretty confident that we'll be signing them here in uh, very short order. We also partnered with Tremble, one of the largest technology companies in the world, and the leading manufacturer of GPS and surveying equipment, and they allowed us the highest level of integration into their equipment than any other company in the world. As a result of that, almost all the leading manufacturers of GPS and GNSS equipment and the leading manufacturers of the utility and pipe locating devices have also opened up their source code to us so we can seamlessly integrate into their devices. Why? Simple. We improve the performance of their equipment and significantly enhance the value they provide to their clients. There's three ways that we sell and market our product. You can download it for free on the Apple Store or Google Play. It works anywhere in the world, but you're limited to the three meter accuracy of the chip that's embedded in the device. For only $4.95, that'll provide you centimeter accuracy, but you're limited to the amount of data that you can store remotely on the device. Our goal is to move you to our flagship product, PointMan Pro, $2,495, unlimited data, cloud and mobile solution, workforce management system, integrates into your existing systems of record. So you can start out small and work your way up. A company like Kiwit will probably need anywhere between 1,000 to 1,500 apps. Or if you're a small zoo, you might only require two. Our revenue, we're expecting to generate about 2.2 million this year. This is in US dollars and 5 million next year. What we're really focusing on is the amount of apps though. So 1,000 apps is our goal total to have sold by the end of the year. We're on track to do that. And then our goal is to sell about 2,250 by the end of next year. The reason being, it's a very critical milestone for us. If we can sell 2,250 apps, we'll be cash flow positive. As I mentioned, we have 21 patents. These patents cover all of the methods required to capture, record, and display the precise location of buried utilities and pipelines. I have a very experienced management team, so we can execute. I have over 25 years of experience in developing innovative technologies. Three years ago, I brought in Vasa Dasan. Vasa is the former chief technology officer for Sun Microsystems. When he was at Sun and its native, it was the largest technology company in the world. Vasa is responsible for migrating Wall Street to the internet. Jonathan Richards has managed the CFO responsibilities for several high profile companies that currently trade on the TSX. And Joel Sutherland is with me right now. We brought in Joel in December. Joel has over 20 years of experience on Wall Street, both as an analyst and on the institutional sales side. Last but not least, this is our cap chart. I have 116 million shares outstanding, 157 million fully diluted. As I mentioned earlier, we have no debt. We have $6 million US in the bank, which is plenty of runway to get us to the cash flow positive milestones that I forecasted. 
Last but not least, when we went public in January of last year, insurance price was 40 cents Canadian. I did a subsequent raise of $10 million in December, again at a share price of 40 cents. And I think today we're trading around 24, 25 cents. So based on everything that we've executed in the last 18 months, needless to say, I think we de-risked this company and showing that we're getting to that point where we could hit the inflection, which is what everybody obviously would like to see, especially as a software company. PBS did a special on us that will be out uh, in June. It'll be broadcasted in 84 million households in over 50 countries. If you want any information, Joel will provide that to it. We'll be happy to send the link to you. But again, that will be out in, uh, in June. And that ends my presentations. And I'm happy to take so on any questions or anything like that. Can you take past those wrongs that are on those your digital platform. Yes, sir. We do. And we do that for a lot of companies. So we did for Keyway. We'll take all the information that's available from multiple sources, upload it up onto the system, and then they can go out and locate where it's actually located. And then, as I mentioned, they can update their records. But the answer is yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, just to buy these contracts so they can some rates here and like that. And, uh, uh, yes, the, 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 the biggest contract we have and the biggest client we have is Qubit, and they're very sensitive about the information that we disclose about Qubit. And there's all kinds of information that we're trying to disclose on Qubit. They, they won't let us do it. I mean, that's the, that's, that is the, that's, that's the holy grail right there is getting Qubit, right? So hopefully I can arrange something with them that they'll allow us to start disclosing the information. But you will start to see our revenue um, going up because the majority of our contracts are based on third and fourth quarter. So that's what these big projects kick off. So you can see our revenue go up to Any other questions? No? Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time.